And so once we have these data in hand, then it's a question of, okay, we have four million records, what are we gonna do with this? How are we gonna start sort of sussing out patterns and identify issues? Um, and so we, uh, when we first got the information, we did some very obvious stories, like uh, here are the people who have racked up the most tickets. And I you know, there was one, there were a handful of people who had gotten like 60 tickets. Yeah. Like and we went and talked to them, and uh, you know, it was, it was good, but it wasn't, it, it was sort of like an enterprise news story, but it wasn't really that uh, investigative in nature. Um, so when we started, we were sort of trying to plot out, okay, like how can we take these records and sort of see what's going on? And we sort of came up with this idea of, okay, well let's just, let's plot out the tickets by day, sort of like a heartbeat for each, uh, each camera, each intersection, uh, to see if there are any anomalies. So uh, we did some reformatting in MySQL to basically take uh, what we did, flat file and uh, reconfigure it so that it was uh, basically a daily count of tickets by intersection um, and also uh, counting up all the instances where the ticket was liable. Um, I took that data and uh, uh, basically migrated into R, which is I'm sure some of you are very familiar with. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a total novice with it, but I managed to get it, I managed to write a script uh, that basically pumped out what you see here just in a static form, you know, just using like basic plot function for all the intersections. Um, and then we had done some uh, sort of uh, some data analysis to identify, uh, you know, extreme outliers, real highs that did not comport with the um, the average number of tickets that were uh, spit out by these cameras on a daily basis. And so we we ended up identifying about 20 uh, intersections. It looks something like this, and this is not how uh, sort of the issuance pattern of a red light camera is supposed to look. <clears throat> um, these things are sort of designed to uh, to alter behavior. So when a red light camera is installed in an intersection, you would expect like a huge uh, number of tickets at the very beginning, slowly tapering off over time as people modify their behavior. Um, and basically stop running red lights because they don't want to get a hundred dollar ticket every time they do it. Um, that's what it's supposed to look like. Um, <clears throat> in reality, we found a number of intersections with insane spikes, like the one on the previous uh, page. Uh, and this is where a, a camera that was issuing maybe like two or three tickets a day was suddenly spiking up to about eight. Uh, and not just for a single day, but over a period of time, and then dropping back to normal like nothing had happened. Uh, David and I took all of this information, we took charts, we took raw data, uh, we put it in front of the city, um, and they, in the end, you know, they were able to throw out some suggestions. Well, maybe it was traffic pattern changes. Maybe there was an event at the United Center. Um, and so we sort of struck those down one by one. They, they really didn't, and they still don't have an answer for why these issues. So we wrote a story about how we found tens of thousands of drivers who essentially got undeserved red light tickets in the city of Chicago. Um, and a lot of the people who are in these spikes presently um, have, are all having their tickets, or have gotten letters from the city, they're all getting their tickets reviewed by the city that they, that they wish. Um, so that, uh, and then the only other thing I did before we sort of get to the app was uh, we, we took these data files, we wrote a Python script, basically pumped the MySQL, MySQL tables into JSON and just drive the bulk of it. When you're saying, are you saying that you looked at the relationship between the spikes and the contested tickets, for example, and how the relationship there? Yes, um, that was one thing. Uh, if you if you jump to, for some of these, uh, like Huff and under if you look at the appeals, like the contested tickets, it's kind of hard to see here, but the, the rate, not only the rate of uh, the, the, which they're contested, but also the rate at which they win are dramatically higher than anything else in the universe. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, is it, it, this still looks very low, right? But if you don't appeal, it's like if you don't play, you, don't, you can't win. Like if you don't appeal, you're never going to get a chance to be found not liable for Ticket. Most people, for $100, they're not going to spend hours of their free time to go uh, contest a ticket downtown. Yeah? Is this 
is that only shows uh, when the red light camera actually activated and then got someone's license plate and issued a ticket? Is it right. they, do they snap photos of all the cameras <coughs> in the intersection? No, it's sort of like... Do you have that data? Because that would be hugely important here. Right. Well, I mean, it's sort of, if they, if, the, if they use an algorithm to sort of predict who is, because they, they don't take a picture of every person who goes across. They use like an algorithm based on a car's speed oh, to really? assume them if they're going to go across. And the cameras aren't counting how many cars. No, that, that gets thrown out. So what we have is the end result. So they take, they, they, they determine that a violation has happened. Uh, there's actually a person who verifies the images. Uh, Red Flex has a whole room of people something like that. Um, that information gets sent to the DMV, so it gets hooked up with the actual driver's information, uh, and then in turn that gets sent to the form. That comes back to the city, and the city actually issues a physical paper ticket. Uh, so that's, we're seeing the end result of that. These are actual tickets that were issued, not, not anything else. So that makes sense. Excuse me. Do you uh, know if uh, the City of Chicago has taken your information or your results and sent it back <coughs> to Xerox to find out if, if in fact there's some correlation between what they're uh, obtaining or what they're providing to the city. Because I would think that by by just looking at your results here, that they could certainly say, well, you know, well, let's start putting a cap on uh, number of tickets per camera or, or something to that effect. So. But it goes beyond a certain level that uh, that there should be some. I do know one cut. thing. Like we we did go. David and I went and looked. So you can actually go online and look at images, like images of video for many tickets. We went and looked at these. Um, and so so this spikes a good example. Um, <coughs> uh, the behavior was very different yeah. for a spike like this. So. Almost everyone caught, and I can't remember if it was this specific spike or another one, but almost everyone was suddenly being caught for right turns when before these cameras would issue only maybe one right turn on red ticket a week. Um, and as far as what the what the city did to get this worked out, they're they're still working on it. We we gave this information, they sat on it for months. We don't we don't we don't really understand what they did, but they were not able to give us any satisfactory answer about why this was uh, what's the, uh, how do you know they're undeserved tickets? Like, are, were people caught for being caught well, the letter of the law? I'd say you, you, you no. <laughs> <laughs> like, normally, is it kind of like you got, like, some, normally if you got some leeway, like, the turns red, you're, like, almost right through the intersection, it's fine, but then, like, you still Well, when we say undeserved, it's because, um, it's, it's, when we say undeserved, it, it has nothing to do, it's not deserved in a legal sense. We're talking about, I mean, there's obviously something wrong at these cameras. A lot of people are being found not liable for their tickets. The appeal rates are much higher. Uh, a lot of these cameras during spikes were, uh, you know, they were capturing people who, you know, who have maybe gone through an intersection many times without issue. Um, we're talking about deserved in the sense that they're, they're behaving the same way and suddenly they're being caught for tickets. It's, it's not, we're not, we're not very, we're not talking about it really in a legal because after looking at hundreds, if not thousands, of these red light tickets and videos, I can tell you that sometimes between just between us at the Chicago Tribune, like multiple people looking at these things, we could not come to an agreement on whether or not that person actually broke the law or not. It's very hard to tell. Can you see where their car is when the light turns red or yellow? Yeah, but the video is very small. You're at sort of a weird vantage point. You're very far back from the intersection where those cameras are. It's very difficult. So have you correlated like employee records with uh, so because the final judgment is being made by a person, right? So mm -hmm. the algorithm tri may be triggering that in that whole current, but then there's different people or or more lenient than other people and Yeah, you know, we we posited many things to the city, they posited many things back at us, we were never able to find a satisfactory answer and still being worked on now. Uh, so many hands up. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Did you try the uh, correlation with events or like construction to see if there was multiple events at a certain area? Like yeah, we, we looked around, around. There, was, there was there was there weren't construction events, there weren't special events mm -hmm. going on. I mean a lot of these intersections are on like you know 
this. I mean, they're they're scattered all over the city. They're not near like even really high traffic areas anyway. So yeah, we did, we couldn't find we couldn't find any any explanation that was sort of outside the intersection that would cause that. Outside of like there was one instance where a lot of people were getting flagged for tickets um, where they forgot to turn the red light camera off. But even then, people, a lot of, they were still issuing tickets, and about half the people never appealed. So yeah. Yeah. Um, I assume, uh, are you able to be, are you in touch at all with Xerox directly about this, or do you have to go through the city? We have to go through the city. Yeah, vendor, vendors won't talk to newspapers directly. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but because what it, like, what seems to me like a very likely plausible scenario is that Xerox is just tweeting around with just try it. Like you, you said that there's, it's not a. We, not we a asked about that. We requested thing. information, you know, correspondence between. And Xerox is <coughs> their vendor. It was actually the company Red Flex that that maintains <coughs> this end of it, like the actual mm -hmm. equipment monitoring the images that come in. You know, is this a violation? Is it not a violation? And all that. Xerox is sort of the back end, you know, keeper of the data. And I, I want to let Alex talk about the actual app too. And Um, what you're talking about is kind of the more interesting part of it. Um, the, the, the goal for the app um, was to serve kind of two, two things. One was to let people figure out if they were tagged during one of these spikes, and the other was to explain to people what these traffic charts like actually mean, like these patterns mean. Um, so the top entry points to the app are entering an intersection, um, and I'll just <coughs> Right, so it'll take you to that particular chart. Um, so you can toggle between all these different things, uh, showing how many were appealed, uh, how many tickets were issued. Uh, you can use the little slider to, you know, zoom in on particular areas because when you get closer, you can tell, like, all right, well, they just didn't issue any tickets right here. So it's kind of what's going on there, um, which is particularly interesting when you start to look at some of the um, higher spikes. Um, the other option is to put a license plate number, and I kind of cheated and grabbed one early. You know, yep, you got pinned in one during the spike, um, and then it also will list all of the tickets that were issued on that particular day, the result of the appeal. Um, if you want to, you could grab the information from this table uh, and go off to another site and enter in and be able to see the video and the photos of you potentially running a red light or not running a red light, um, depending on. Uh, so this, and then the second part of it uh, is explaining how this whole thing works. Um, I already kind of clicked on the spoil some of it, but so showing an initial pattern um, of how <coughs> this is how a camera should work. Basically, you see a bunch of spikes, a bunch of tickets in the beginning. Then people, you know, smart up and realize they shouldn't run the red light. Um, then you see another intersection, like Alex kind of talked about, uh, Halstead and 119th, uh, that shows that obviously there's something different happening. Um, a little bit of description about why you should care about that. Um, and then this last part shows you how many people actually appeal these things. Um, and then the reason why you don't see a success rate on there is you can probably imagine uh, trying to navigate through three different levels of data on the same bars would be kind of confusing. Um, so we kind of limit it to the kind of simpler format for uh, everyday user. Um, you can also click on one of these um, kind of worst intersections that we flag. It gives you the details as well. Um, and then as I was kind of flashing earlier, uh, you can just go ahead and download all the data. Um, I don't recommend trying to open this in Excel. Uh, it'll, probably, <laughs> uh, it'll probably kill your computer. Um, so the, the kind of technology behind this, uh, the chart is just D3 drawing off JSON. Um, the ticket data uh, that's displaying in these tables, and that's kind of indicating some other uh, points on the chart. Uh, we use uh, this kind of internal storage database type thing called Panda, um, and there's a way for you to essentially use it as the back end for your apps. Uh, and the rest of it's just Twitter bootstrap uh, and some CSS. Yeah, yeah, the, the Brian Boyer Panda. No, I think you're talking about the what the Python library for data analysis. This is a different thing. It was developed by, uh, I mean, really by Brian Boyer. Chris Rokoff, yeah. Rokoff at the time when they were at the Tribune, it's sort of like an internal database manager 
for new interns to like use and things like that. Yeah, essentially, <coughs> you set it up, you can upload your data to Panda. It allows everybody in the newsroom to be able to look at it. It allows kind of like an archive of all this information. Um, I know when I worked on the graphics desk, I would deal with census data on a regular basis, and it got to be a real kind of pain to be able to download it from the census all the time, when instead we can just stick it up on Panda, and it's internal, we can get to it right away, we can run queries on it, we can kind of do whatever you want with it. Um, so that's what we're using uh, in terms of to run queries to get this information out. And it is responsive, also, if anybody's trying to do like heavy data journalism or data anything on a phone, it sucks. Um, it's kind of hard. Data visualization on a small screen is a challenge. Do you have a sense of how the engagement of something like this compares to like, how many people have the article versus yeah, um, the This article? story did exceptionally well for us. I mean, we had, it was a premium story, which means that you basically have to pay for it um, or get to it through social media. Um, and I think we had well over 100,000 people with paid views on it, which is a crappy metric, but it's a metric. Um, uh, within the first, I think, 48 hours or 24 hours, something, which is exceptionally high for a story that you expect people to pay money for. Um, in terms of how the app performed, uh, we're looking at about 60,000 page views and about 70,000 hits to the database um, within the first week. So people were using it, and um, you know, people that follow David Kidwell, uh, who's the other reporter working on this, they were tweeting at him saying, like, hey, I got busted in uh, one of these spikes. Uh, here's my story, you know, that kind of thing. Did you look at um, like safety data for intersections and compare them to like um, looking at whether you know intersections with the cameras got safer or even if the spikes that is the only one that I remember. Yeah, that's so complicated. <laughs> I can't even tell you. But uh, the, the city inspector general actually did that. They took a look at if you reported some of the website of uh, right turn collision, I think it was, versus yeah. a red light camera. I guess the whole the purpose of these red light cameras is that they're supposed to reduce collisions. You're when in turn, you trade, you essentially trade one kind of accident for another. You trade an angle crash or a T-bone for a rear ender, yeah. which are generally less severe, but still. I mean, it's, it's, there's a lot of debate about whether or not these things actually make driving safer. You guys talk about that if you have the data from that intersection? Um, it's, we it's, did it's, years ago for... Yeah, it's, it's something that, yeah, I mean, you can talk to some of the older stuff that we've done. Yeah, so a few years ago when the city was pushing the speed cameras, we, you know, the, the mayor said, like, well, it's going to make it safer, you know, everyone's going to be happy. Um, and so we looked at red light cameras in relation to pedestrian accidents. And essentially, like, there wasn't any real significant difference between crash change at an intersection or pedestrian incident change at, a, at an intersection compared to, that had a red light camera compared to one that did not. Um, and that's pretty much like the norm across the country is that pedestrian crashes are going down, uh, pedestrian incidents are going down. Um, so it's not necessarily that you can attribute it to red light cameras, though it's really easy to want to. Um, <coughs> Wait, say that again. Is that the norm as it goes down than that here? Is that what you said? Well, no, it, they're going down here too. It, there's, there's no correlation between decline at red light cameras compared to other intersections, which is a national trend. <coughs> is there a faster decline than the years after the um, cameras were instituted? From what I re and this was a couple years ago, from what I remember, it was pretty <laughs> consistent. Okay. I wonder whether there's a correlation between that decline and the increase in the number of public bicycles. Oh, the Diddy system? Sponsored bicycles. Uh, yeah. That's pedestrian. consequences of being tagged by one of the red light cameras is that you get this ticket which you may or may not be able to pay or contest or whatever. So you guys don't have any follow up with folks that are being tagged in one of these spikes to see if they have any follow on consequences of that if they if they don't pay it because they think that it's wrong or something like that. I mean yeah there's sense of collection by the city. So like you can't just not pay on these tickets. Yeah, you can pay or you can pay a higher amount later. Is it, or is it just something that they, that they do want to do it? 
I mean, in the end, um, the I'm trying to remember like, what the vendor actually mm -hmm. said. So they had a representative from Xerox who who said that ultimately the the thing that made it burdensome was all the time it seemed like it came with Google and had to do like basically QA on the export from their system. Um, and so I mean, whether it's, it's a good argument, I, mean, I I don't know. It's it's sort of it's sort of hard for me to say. Like I as a reporter, well, I was wondering what it was a legal standing for like it's oh, oh yeah, yeah. for a now in Illinois, yeah. absolutely. Uh, One of the exemptions is I do it with but if they did they did come to you and say that it's unduly burdensome as well, they have to look at the legal limits. Yeah. Yeah. Um, with the, we actually, we've, we've done another dump since, so it was a one-time dump that ran through September and then we got through March before we launched it. So we can go back, because I mean, I guess the, the script's already there, the framework's already there to generate this data again. So potentially in the future we can, we can't keep an eye on it, we can't keep getting the data. It's not automated at, at all in that process. We can get it again and, and feed it into this and keep it going. It's, we haven't really discussed how often Yeah, I mean it would be available right oh, there. there. Yeah. yeah, I mean and if yeah, it is. It's all it's all there. Yeah. If we got more, if we made another request to get more, we feed it right in there. Yeah. Um, I know it hasn't been up very long. Have you guys seen any sort of or heard anything about any sort of increase in um, appeals since this was published? Maybe I don't know. We have to look. Yeah, we'll definitely we'll probably tap into that in the near future to see see what's going on. How people are availing, because I mean, as you can imagine, people will lose their stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the the folks that are in the spiked areas um, <coughs> that have contested, do they get sent to a courtroom in, in the area that the uh, light is is located, or do they have to go to the city I mean, I, downtown? I, I, I believe it, I believe it's all downtown. It's all well, downtown, it's all so they have to go to the downtown to contest it as well. Yeah, yeah it takes it takes yeah. time. So every, but every, pretty much everybody in one of these spikes that we sent to the city has gotten a letter in the mail giving them the option to contest their ticket. About sixteen thousand of those have gone out. Yeah, because I was, I guess, the reason why I was asking is because um, if there was some kind of uh, issue with regard to what was happening that was causing the spikes, if the money or the funding was going to the alderman's group that uh, that that ward happened to be in for that particular camera. Then that would make some sense. That would be no, I mean, as far as I understand, it's still under one big pot. Okay, so one big pot. Yeah. yeah. I think you might have already looked at I don't know what the resolution on the time cast is, but is it possible to, for example, demonstrate that it, there's a sequence of cars at a certain intersection that could not, that couldn't all have gone to the red light just because of the time stamp? Some of them must have been outside the window. Like, you, um, if you know the, the, the red light cycle time. Right. When it's doing that, and you look at the time stamp, you might be able to prove that these can't all be that way. Right. Um, they they don't. They generally don't issue in a series like that. Mm -hmm. Like there's even even in spikes, there's 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 separation mm -hmm. between the tickets. Mm -hmm. and it's not like they there's three people well, in a row. Or but if you know that you know the, the lights timing as well. Uh, the thing. city says that once it goes below a certain, I mean, it's like there there's certain like standards for yellow light. Depending on the speed, I think it's like 35 miles an hour or something like that. It's like three and a half seconds below that. It's supposed to be a three-second yellow light. And, it, and the city has said like once the once the timing goes below, if something's out of whack with the timing on a yellow light, then that, that, that intersection will just go to like a flashing yellow or flashing red instead. So if something was out of whack with the yellow light, the, the actual intersection is supposed to go. Out of the Wondering how you uh, picked the uh, twelve uh, most dramatic spikes. Um, we were sort of uh, the way we picked the most dramatic ones. We were we were just looking for. I mean, it was it wasn't that.
Topkin, I'd say it was more art than science in some ways. I mean, we were really we were looking for um, the spikes that were where you had ticket volumes that were just really far above like what the camera had been putting out daily for um, you know for for you know uh, up to up to the life of the camera, which in that case that was you know, like 2009. <laughs> but we were we were looking for the the cameras that had like the, the worst outliers and like the and like sustained outliers. So all these spikes, you know, not one where it was just like the camera had a bad day. Like I don't think you could look at it. And, you know, this one where suddenly it goes up to issuing as many 80 tickets a day after averaging, um, you know, in the previous year, you know, probably about. I mean, we were just sort of looking for the, the largest gap between them. And we actually, I mean, we, we poured over graphs, like, visually. We looked at them, and we looked through, you know, the, there are, I think there are about 340 different cameras in the data. So this displays intersection-level information. Most intersections have more than one camera. We looked through graphs by camera extensively. Um, and, and, and pick the ones that we thought were crazy. And another thing is, like, when a camera goes out of service, sometimes for months or years at a time, you know, we requested maintenance logs. I mean, there are none, or there were none. I mean, uh, our requests basically came back empty from the city. <laughs> maintenance logs, anything like that from Red Flex, um, they, just, they just weren't there. Um, so there's no, just as much as, you know, this thing shows high highs, there's not really any explanation for when things just drop out entirely for periods of time, which is also not so bad. Someone, someone plugged it. What's that? Someone <laughs> yeah. plugged it. Yeah. Very good. Kick the, kick the plug or something. Yeah. Even maintenance records are sitting on the lights themselves. Uh, we we tried. Um, I don't. I can't recall if we actually made that request on the on the actual lights. We were looking. We were focusing pretty specifically just on the red flex maintenance. They're responsible for the camera. The city changes the timing on lights every season. Um, it doesn't change the lights. Right. I mean, uh, but at the same time, I don't see much seasonal variation in this area either. Uh, the yeah. parts I saw were transition summer, transition winter. Yeah. Picture in the third row. Yeah. Um, this is, I guess, more feedback about how the actual um, evidence is taken, but he brought this in interesting point with the timestamp idea. That what if on the actual video evidence of say someone running a red light, it actually said, okay, it's yellow, it's timing out, it's timing out, and this is the exact moment it switched from yellow to red, and that would actually, and you could just show that to a judge and you could probably say like, look, the law is that I have this much time. After the yellow end, it does. It, it does. I guess yeah. I was misunderstanding. If you look at the images, it does have a timestamp oh. connected to the yellow, and people had used that as an argument before. Oh, we, okay. we did find yellows that were out of whack. Mm -hmm. uh, but some some of the yellows that it was timestamping, like the time was like a fraction of a single second. It was too it was a second. It was too low to be believed. I don't think that was actually the time. Okay, so that data is actually present. It is. It's in. It's in the images. It's not, it's not something we have here. It's in the actual, you can see it in the images of the the one of Hello? Yes. Were you, the, I'm told by the alderman out in the 38th, I guess, that the, uh, the cameras are always on, not the red light camera, but that the red light camera, yes, is always on. And that the picture then that you're getting from the splash is, is separate? I mean, I've, can, can my understanding is, yeah, it's full, the, Have you gotten the full camera feed? Well, I mean, uh, it's, from what I understand, like, the, like, the images are taken, they're still from video that are pulled out. But as for, as for getting the actual camera feed, uh, that's only available on the, uh, the, on the Red Flex's uh, photo notice website, and it um, and it, it essentially goes away after 120 days. It gets archived and then it gets destroyed after two years. And so we were not able to get videos of all 
tickets we wanted to because it amounts to a hell of a lot of video. Uh, I think more than we could reasonably deal with. Were you, were you actually able to get any of that recently? Some, some video, when we start, when we made it clear that we were going sort of forward, we were going to publish this story, uh, some of the video for, some of the older video in Spike came suddenly reappeared. So we've been looking at still images and then video was up. Um, I think, I, yeah, the violation over 190 days, the video is no longer available. Um, but you can still pay. <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.